yesterday we saw how to make the dough now this is kind of a, a two-part video yeah I'll show you how to make a pizza but more importantly I'm actually using the exact ingredients that they use at most of the New York slash uh, New Jersey pizzerias and I can tell you right now it smells great in here this is gonna be a tough one for you guys because you're gonna get to watch me uh, eat a pizza that I actually have uh, in the oven right now let's just uh, start in the front row there with the ingredients we talked yesterday about the tomatoes that I use Okay, this is Stanislaw. This is their 7-Eleven um, Excellent Tomatoes. These are grown out of California. And for those of you who are interested in reading the ingredients on a can, let's read the ingredients. Vine ripened fresh tomatoes. Vine ripened is the key. A lot of the tomatoes that you eat or that are in the grocery store, those are picked like long before they're ripe. So these are vine ripe. A little salt and naturally derived citric acid. That's it. Three ingredients in these tomatoes. Uh, tre tremendous, which is why they're used all over the country and you know, most pizzerias. Now, what I do with this sauce, if you want to come over here, oh, wait a second. Got to make this official. So what I do is I just empty one of these cans into this container. And you, if you can come over here. What I add to it is I add about two tablespoons of sugar, about a tablespoon of salt, and then about, I don't know, two tablespoons full of uh, basil. Uh, basil is the magic uh, Italian uh, spice, if you will. That is, uh, that's how we do the sauce. That's how we make, that's how we make the sauce. And if you look at the consistency, uh, there, that's how it comes out of the can. Now, when you, when you taste that, Oh, that's perfect. You know what that tastes like? It tastes like fresh tomatoes and the Jersey Shore. That's delicious. Let's talk about the cheese. Most importantly, here's the cheese that's, that's used. It's called Grande, uh, based out of Wisconsin. Uh, they have the best cheese. Uh, that's a whole milk mozzarella, part skim. And uh, to the right of that is the Parmesan. Got to have the Parmesan again, Grande. And again, these are actual ingredients of, of what you get when you're on the Jersey Boardwalk or New York or a lot of those pizzerias. Uh, yesterday, we made some dough. And as you can see, if you remember yesterday, kind of, let me just take it out of here. If you remember yesterday, it was a lot smaller than that. So that's the benefit of being in the refrigerator for 24 hours. Now, before you use yours, it's real important, first of all, uh, preheat your oven for about an hour, and at the same time, take the dough ball out and set it on the counter. Don't set it on the stove because it'll end up cooking the dough balls. Now, let's talk about tools real quick. Get yourself one of these. It's a pizza stone. This will be in your oven, and I would put this like on the bottom shelf of your uh, oven. Just put, take the rack out, put it on the bottom shelf, put this in there, heat your oven up for at least an hour, and uh, what temperature? As hot as it'll go. 500 usually, some gas ovens will go to 550, but this is a must, and you can get those anywhere. Here's another tool that I use, and I'll use these screens, it's just called a pizza screen, you can get those anywhere, they're cheap, a few bucks each, uh, they last forever. Um, the reason I like to do that, and you'll see here in a second, once I get my dough stretched out, I'll put it on here and then put that in the oven on top of that, all right? Once the pizza goes in, it's gonna cook for about 10 minutes. At about five minutes, I'll set the alarm and I'll grab, a, a, with a, a towel, I'll grab that and just kind of shimmy off the pizza right onto the pizza stone. Why do I use this? Because that's quite a small target to try to launch the pizza dough in if I was gonna do it the traditional way, like when I use my big pizza oven. So this is a great way to kind of manage it. I'll show you how we use it here in a second. 
here's your dough ball. This is going to be a big thing of flour. And do not worry, you can't put too much flour on this. And what I do is just a couple times around, all right? And then uh, you just flour your surface. And again, do not worry about, oh my gosh, is that too much flour? It's not, all right? So why don't you come around here and I'll, I'll show everybody kind of how to, this is called opening up the dough. And you can see this, this thing is, it's fluffed up over the last 24 hours. So what you want to do is you just want to build your crust, all right? And you just go round and round, take your time. And you're just building your crust. And then you just start pushing out from the middle. You'll see that all those air bubbles, those are good. Those are fine. All right? And just give it like a quarter of a turn and push, push out towards the edge. See how that's going? Turn it over, same thing. Now all you're doing is just, I'm not even pushing that hard. I'm just, you know, stretching the dough out a little bit. Just getting it ready to kind of hand stretch it, if you will. All right. Some people will do this. Let me make sure we got enough flour on here. Where they'll pull, they'll stretch it. All right. Here's how I do it. To start with, just like gravity, just almost kind of like you're almost kind of bouncing it, right? Just let gravity kind of take over. Now, what you'll notice I'm doing is I'm letting the dough hit this. Because when we get this stretched out a little bit more, it becomes, we don't want to tear any holes in the dough if, all, if at all possible, all right? So, um, I forgot to mention, make sure you take all of your jewelry off. No watches, no rings, and definitely no long nails. So, when we're working with the dough, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have my hands like that. Not fingers like that, because again, you know, you don't want the dough to go through your fingers. So, when I'm stretching the dough, I'm kind of just doing it, laying it over my hands. So what I'll do is just, you just gotta, once you get it going, just little stretches, little pulls. You don't have to pull that hard on this. And I just kind of give it a quarter turn every time. And when I'm stretching, I'm stretching from here, from the edges. Dale joined us. Hey Dale. So I'm stretching from the edges, all right? And again, here's just the method of let gravity do it, but let it rest on, the, on, your, um, on your table, all right? So once I get it, once I get it open pretty good, then I can go into, like I said, stretch about, turn it about every quarter turn. And then you start putting your hands together and it's just, just little, little stretches at a time. Don't pull on it too hard. All right? And you, you, you kind of get into a rhythm. Sometimes I, I notice myself like bouncing a little bit, but all I'm doing is I have that, and I have that, and it's just right on the edge. And you're just kind of letting gravity help you out. What you'll do is you'll start noticing where you'll feel like it's, oh, it's a little thick right here, a little thick right there. And what you'll start seeing, I don't know if you can tell, but you can start seeing how thin it's going to be. You can see the light through it, right? So again, it's just, see, I'm letting it, I'm letting it hit the, the bottom, all right? Just letting it hit. So that, not too difficult, of, of all the processes that I've shown you so far, I would probably say this part will be the part that, um, where you build your, your skills. Making the dough, you just follow the recipe, get good ingredients. All right, so how do you know when it's big enough? That's what she said. That's what she said. Here's my screen, my pizza screen, and you just lay it on there. You can come over here and take a look. And, and I know from making this, again, that's a 16 ounce dough ball. I know from making this that I can go, I can stretch that a little bit more. Again, what we're looking for here in the New Jersey pizza is thin crust, the foldable slice, all right? So for me to grab that, it's just easy. Just pick it up and right onto your, move that out of the way. Again, just take your time. Never ever use a rolling pin. In fact, if you ever go to a pizzeria or any place and you see them with a rolling pin rolling it out, or they have a, it's called a sheeter, which is a machine that rolls it out. 
stay away from that. What they're doing with that is they're, it's called degassing your dough. Um, remember we put the, um, the, um, the yeast in there. What does the yeast do? The yeast makes it fluffy. So don't ever use a rolling pin. Just, just use this method. All right? So that should be good enough. Just throw it on there. We'll set it on gently. And then what I do is just kind of make it neat. All right. So let's talk about another tool. Uh, this is, you know, to sauce your pizza. I tell you what, I've gone through, I don't know, I've spent probably $100, $150 trying to find the right one to use for saucing the pizza. And it turns out the best one was at the dollar store. This is a, this cost a dollar. I think this is Betty Crocker or something. It's like the perfect size. And you'll see that's about as much sauce as you want. You don't want to make it too saucy. So what you do is you just put it right in the middle, right? Little circles kind of find the bottom of the pizza and don't push. You're not trying to drive this pizza through the table, right? You just push it and you just start going around in a, in a circle. And the important thing too is make sure you get it to the edges. All right? You just take your time with this. There's no, you're, there's no rush, all right? How's that look? Looks pretty good, right? At this point, I'll take a little bit more of the basil and just a little sprinkle on, all right? Next would be the Parmesan cheese. Same thing, just a little sprinkle on. You could also add red pepper flakes if you wanted at this point, all right? Then, here's the cheese. And what I always make sure, make sure you get it to the edge. And a lot of times I'll just start at the edge, all the way around. People will say, well, how much cheese do you put on? You know, there's, there's books and stuff that'll tell you, hey, you should only put this much on, but I just kind of go by eye. Less is more sometimes, because this, this cheese in particular, it goes a long way. I mean, all right, there's that. And then usually I'll just come back in with a little bit more Parmesan, all right? Okay, um, pretty simple, right? Not, not too difficult, all right? Stay right there, I'll be right back. Why don't you come over here, babe? We'll take a look at this. All right, here's what you get. This was, uh, this was 10 minutes. Now, what I'm looking for, when I know it's done, of course, the cheese is melted, but a, a little bit of brown around here, but most importantly, the bottom. See how that's browned on the bottom? That's a must, you gotta have it brown. Nothing worse than, than getting a pizza and the, the bottom's not cooked. You know, obviously the, the trick there is just make sure you don't burn it. Um, every oven is different. That's why I would tell you, set your timer for 10 minutes. It's about how long that's gonna take. But check the pizza in about six or seven minutes and just look at that bottom. Plus it wouldn't hurt to, to turn it 180 degrees if your oven didn't have convection. All right, so let's, let's cut this. I like to put a little a little Parmesan on at the end. All right. If you can see how thin that is, that is, that's what you want. And that's the beauty of taking your time stretching it. The bottom's perfect. And great thing about these slices, it comes with its own handle. All right, you ready? Here's the money shot. Mm. I feel like I'm back at the shore again. That, that's so good. I got one more bite. What kind of a beer would you suggest that would go with your pizza? Uh, for uh, cheese pizza. Um, I don't know. Something, something light. You could, I don't know. I like Pilsners myself, but um, actually, it's such a you know when you go with just cheese, you could probably go just about any type of uh, beer that you want to hang on another another. Uh, 
see that pizza. That's so good. It really does. If you ever wondered what it was like to have a pizza, if you, if you haven't been lucky enough to have a pizza from New York, and yeah, there's places around it that say that they have the New York slice. I'll guarantee you, well, I'm not guarantee, but very rarely will you find any company that uses those ingredients, including the, um, the flour that we used yesterday. So, um, let's see, what else did I want to say? There was like one other thing I wanted to say. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, obviously from here you can make put in whatever ingredient you want on there. Uh, Hawaiian is obviously a very popular um, pizza. What I would tell you if you're going to make the Hawaiian, make sure you drain your pineapple really good. Put the pizza in with the ham on it, the Canadian bacon, but don't put the pineapple on yet. Wait till the pizza is about, I don't know, four or five minutes from being done. Then put your pineapple on. The reason being is that that pineapple has a lot of liquid in it. And if you put it in right from the beginning, it releases that liquid and it can just make your pizza soggy. So if you ever had a soggy Hawaiian, that's why they put the, they put the pineapple on it. Uh, right when we started. Um, uh, getting back to the sauce, this is a vegetarian sauce, so if you're looking for just a, a, and by the way, look how red that sauce is. And there's nothing in that, no artificial ingredients, that's just tomatoes. So if you want to have, if you're a vegan or, or you know, somebody that just wants to eat veggies, just make a veggie pizza. And I think that's about, that about does it. So next will be uh, Glenn's Families meatball. We'll do that next. And uh, just everybody appreciate you taking the time stopping by. Anybody has any questions, you can call me, reach out to me, text me, or whatever. And I'll be happy to help you out. So thanks again. Everybody have a great day. Bye.